let us continue exploring. Uh, we just made a scatter plot and now we are going to make a stem plot. Stem and leaf plot is very easy. Uh, so, you have to just say which is the variable. So, in this case we are plotting the uh, grain size and so we just say stem and you get this date. So, now you can see uh, the decimal point is at the pipe symbol itself. So, it is 9.349, 10.4, 9.4, 9.4, 10.4, 10.4, 10.4, 10.4. Ten point six, ten point six, etc. Okay, so uh, this gives you a good idea also about the data spread, and you can already see that. Okay, so this looks like a, a peak, and there seems to be another peak towards the end, right? So it it looks like it has two peaks. Um, that is what the stem plot uh, indicates, and of course you can also make a dot chart. Uh, so, we are going to use the dot chart and the same quantity, right. So, we want to uh, look at the ASTM grain size in dot chart and uh, so this is the dot chart, right. So, this is the grain size uh, somewhere about 10 to somewhere about uh, uh, probably 27, 28 uh, and, and uh, the dot chart shows you. Um, previously, I showed you that uh, dot chart can show you the um, the extreme points or the outliers, uh, but it is very difficult from this figure to figure out which one is an outlier. Okay. So, so dot chart and stem and leaf plot are two other ways of visualizing data and once we have done that of course, let us go do some rank based reports and represent them graphically. We have seen empirical cumulative distribution function. And we know that the easiest way to generate one is to say plot ECDF and we say 5, right. Uh, this is to plot the empirical cumulative distribution function, right. So, you see this and uh, so, so, so you can see the, uh, there is another way which also we have learnt. You can just say plot. ECDF of this data, right. Um, okay, so, that is no different and we also saw yesterday how to make uh, our own um, cumulative distribution plot. Just to remind ourselves how it is done, let us do it once more. Um, so, it is a good idea to know what this uh, empiric empirical cumulative distribution function is. So, let us generate it ourselves, right. So, this is the one, um, so let us look at it. So, first I say that okay, take the uh, fifth column and call that as x and sort that x in increasing order because decreasing is false and store it back in x. Y is the cumulative sum of x. And we are going to take the uh, final value and we are going to divide by that so that the numbers go from 0 to 1 you see. So, it is normalized. So, this is the normalization step and then we are going to plot the, uh, the grain size versus the cumulative uh, function and we are going to use the step type for plotting. And of course, x label is ASTM grain size and y label is normalized, y label is normalized uh, CDF, right. So, you get this. So, this is no different from the previous figure that you generated, but except that now we have written the code ourselves. So, uh, R is both a software and a programming language. So, you can just call a function or you can write your own code to do the same thing. Okay. So, this we have done earlier also once, but this is just to remind you of how a CDF is generated. Okay. Of course, one can use uh, ggplot and uh, we learnt uh, yesterday that using ggplot it is easier to change the uh, y uh, scale and uh, so you, we have to use the library scales also and ggplot you have to tell which is the data you have to tell which is the aesthetics. So, we want to plot the ASTM grain size and what is the plot? It is a ECDF plot and so you have to do the statistical uh, analysis for the cumulative distribution and the scale of y should be uh, probability scale. 
So, if it is a actually a normal distribution then this will look like a straight line. So, by looking at it you will know what the distribution of the data is. So, that is the reason why we want to uh, put this scale and see if, if it actually shows that or it shows any deviation. Um, so, let us do that and we see that here also there is a deviation. So, it is not a, a straight line. So, you do not expect the grain size distribution to be normal. Uh, and of course, there is a warning message. So, the transformation introduced uh, infinite values in the uh, y axis, ok. So, but that is not crucial. So, we do not worry about it, ok. So, let us uh, uh, plot histogram and that is easy. This is a histogram, right. And as we saw when we did the uh, stem and leaf plot, Right? So, there is a peak, there is uh, this value then goes down and then there is a smaller peak here, uh, which is what you saw here. It came down and then it went to a peak here. So, you can see in the histogram also this uh, um, sort of second peak, it is not quite a peak, but it is a, a rather largish tail and a very fat tail. Right? So, so, if this is distribution, uh, then this is a, a much larger uh, tail, fatter tail. Uh, so, this is very common, uh, sometimes data does not really show nice uh, bell shaped curves and here is an example. After histogram plot, of course, yesterday uh, uh, in the, the previous session we did uh, the box and whisker plot. So, let us do that. Um, so, let us say box plot. Right. So, we have the box plot. And uh, as usual, so we can make the box plot uh, with the horizontal uh, to be true. So, uh, you can see that this is the um, mean and uh, this, uh, this box actually represents the uh, second and third quantile. Okay. So, to get this idea, let us do this uh, command now quantile. Uh, which will clearly show what is happening, right. So, 50 percent of the data is somewhere here 15.1, right. And 25 percent of the data is from 25 to 50 happens between 13.2 somewhere here to 15.1 and 18.6 is by the time 75. So, 25 to 75 percent of the data uh, lies here. And uh, this is on one side the uh, first quantile and this is the last quantile. So, that is what uh, this box plot actually represents. So, it gives you an idea of spread of the data. Okay. So, so, this is another way of looking at the spread of the data. So, that is what we have seen here. right? Okay. So, once we have the uh, so, we have exhausted all the rank based reports that one can prepare and we have even looked at one of the summary values and of course, we can get the other ones. Uh, the one is mean, okay. um, so that is 16.3, right. so that is the mean value. Let us look at the median value that is 15.1 that is where this line is there. This dark line actually represents the median and variance. Uh, so, variance is 15.5 uh, uh, and the standard deviation and that is some 3.9. Uh, uh, so, that is the standard deviation. Uh, of course, we want to uh, uh, plot these numbers along with the scatter plot to get a better idea. Uh, so, let us do that. So, what are we doing? We are plotting the uh, data uh, like a scatter plot and then we are drawing lines for the mean and the median and uh, mean plus standard deviation, mean minus standard deviation, mean plus 2 standard deviation and mean minus 2 standard deviation. Okay. So, so, you can see 
that mean is uh, uh, here 16 something 16.3 and the median is 15.1 and uh, these green lines represent uh, points which are within one standard deviation and the blue lines represent points which are within the two time standard deviation. So, this blue line you cannot even see here. So, these points are all lying between mean and uh, minus two time standard deviation. But on the other side you can see large number of data points that are lying just outside of this uh, 2 sigma. So, these are basically the points that are uh, outliers, right. So, so to summarize we have already looked at quantile. Uh, we have plotted um, the data. So, that is the first thing that we did um, and uh, we had a gap uh, x axis, uh, but you do not have to do that because your dot chart for example, does the same thing without any introducing any gap or anything right. Um, just looking at the numbers, uh, this is because it is really not putting the grain IDs. If you have to have grain ID here and the numbers there, then you have to use a dot chart, uh, the, uh, gap chart, gap plot, but the dot chart otherwise can give you uh, the complete data in one go. So, these are ways of looking at the data. Then we made several rank based uh, uh, reports and represented them graphically, CDF, histogram, box plot and things like that. And then we have made the uh, summary based reports like mean, median, variance, standard deviation, quantiles, etc. And then we actually plot all the data points and also these uh, summary based uh, uh, numbers on the same plot to have an idea about the spread of the data and outliers. So, this completes the analysis, uh, descriptive data analysis for data set 1. And now, let us take the more complicated data set 2, uh, which is meant for two different phases and do the analysis and see what that has to tell us. Thank you.